That's a thing now. Greetings, I, the War Owl, greets you. Repeat after me as fast as you can. Unique Nunuk, unique Nunuk, unique Nunuk. Can't do it, can ya? But I can because I'm a magical word wizard. The many changes to the new nuke open up a whole realm of possibilities in gameplay. So here are some tips and tricks to get you started. First, let's chitty chat about the new outside. So the many changes to outside greatly favor the terrorists. You can just see from the angles up here what can really hit you as you get up on top of the silo. There's not a lot. This angle right here, but again, you don't even have to peek that. You've got T-Red you can watch uh, and inside of the big garage. The CTs kind of have to, if they even want to look there, they have to like push forward a little bit in order to see up top. And that leaves them very exposed to your players outside. So as you get up on top of the silo as a terrorist, pretty easy to hold these angles. You also got to be watching here, see if anybody pushes to red. And you can drop down. Once you've dropped down, you've opened up this entire outside. You've got these things to use as cover. You can watch this angle in case they try to push you close. It's, it really opens up the map. But again, if you're looking inside a big garage, you'll see the feet of the AWPer running around, the CT AWPer if they're playing that position. You can watch this position right here. Sometimes CTs will peek you. You also gotta check and make sure they're not pushing at the uh, their side, their side red. I don't know what I'm gonna call it anymore because it's no longer red. It's not a thing. So look at how open this is. This is really great. You can move out. You can even drop down and start helping out. You can peek all of these angles. And most importantly, if the CTs decide to not even hold this position, Boom, you can sneak up top and get across the rafters, get all the way over to heaven. So that's kind of what you're looking for as a T side. This side is kind of unchanged as you're moving down here. You still have to worry about the big garage. Um, you can throw a smoke from over top to block that off. You can even smoke off the cross right here. But again, with players up here, you don't have to worry about it that much or as much. And getting across here is going to be a lot easier when you have players up top to hold that extra position. Now, let's look at it from the CT perspective, because we have to look at it from how do we deal with this? How do we prevent this this uh, situation where the T's are able to push outside easily? Normally, what you would do is you'd run into a position like this, hold outside, hold this angle. You could even peek this angle. Sometimes people would boost over this box and just try to prevent them from getting across. You could get smoked out. You could fall back and watch it from a different angle. But as you moved over here, you'd kind of hold here. Every once in a while, you would check up on top of silo to see if anybody was hopping up. You can't do that anymore. You have to move all the way over here and you see you have all this obstruction, all this crap in the way to watch this angle right here. And that's a long way from where outside is. You can't really keep peeking it and can't hold it as well from this position. So I think a lot of teams are gonna think about holding it a different way. Um, maybe putting players way, way further back. Now, one thing you can do is use two dedicated outside players. You could have one player still inside a big garage like this, holding this angle. And if he gets in trouble, he can fall back and kind of look. You can see this gap right here, which is really nice. And get these guys moving forward. You can even jump up here and watch red. Watch this spot. Tons of different places you can fall back to. But at the same time, you can have another player out here standing at the same spot watching up top to make sure they don't push you there or even a player at mini player mini watching this position like this and then peeking outside as well and also you can watch up top if they try to push forward here the mini player can get an easy kill on them now that's if you're playing far forward sometimes you want to put a uh, a player right here inside of secret this player can rotate back as well if he needs to but just kind of hold red and hold outside and from secret you can watch up top you can see silo you can see this whole area here um and you can watch red to make sure they don't push you. So maybe putting a player secret and then also having a player play a little bit more passive out here. Even up top. So you can have a player secret and then a player heaven just in case. And the secret player can kind of fall back and the heaven player can watch him. If they smoke the cross, heaven player is still going to be able to see over the top of those. So just different ways to set it up. There's a lot of different places. One spot that I really like is up here on the rafters itself. You used to not be able to sit here because you'd get picked really, really, really easily. But here, you can't see through the bottom of this. Look at it from their perspective. That's just completely um, opaque. You just can't see the players standing there. So if you just chill in this position right here, hold this angle so they don't push you, you can run forward and backwards, even duck and pop up and shoot. 
in order to kill players who are crossing. And you also have this forward position to make sure that players uh, don't push through this area right here. So I really like that spot as well. And it's not as dangerous anymore. It used to be, if you were playing up here, you had to rotate like all the way back to heaven to not die if they started to push. You can fall back right here, and if they're pushing you pretty aggressively, jump right down behind this box here. So you can hold this angle as well. And this is actually a really nice spot to just hold, even if you got an AWP here, and just holding this spot, because you have cover. Radio has also seen a few minor changes, including a ridiculous wall bang spot that will hopefully get patched. Stand at the middle Volvo on the step and aim at the bottom left corner of the invincible window. This will take out a player playing headshot position. Yes, it's incredibly cheap, and yes, it will probably be patched. As an opera playing ramp though, I prefer to stand on the ramp itself so that I can escape if the terrorists do decide to push here. But there's more to taking ramp than a few cheap parlor tricks. I'm a terrorist and I want to push the new ramp. Now you can see here, if you look at this angle right here, if there's an opera playing that spot, you're probably going down unless you can peek him like really, really well and get that shot. And then kind of creep forward here, hold this. Look at that angle right there. And then on top of the boxes, kind of tough to push it. So one thing I like to do is if you jump across right here, it's a little bit more difficult for an opera to hit you. A good opera, if they're prepared for it, and if you do it like every round, still might be able to hit you as you jump across. But if they're not prepared for it, uh, I'll show you it from the CT's perspective, from right here. They're going to be holding this angle right here, or even a little bit out. And this is the spot I like to play, up here. So they're going to be holding right there as well, kind of this angle. And if you jump by, you have to land a shot like that. And it's a little bit more difficult to hit if you do uh, jump by. You can even throw a flash, you can do anything you want to get by. But anyway, uh, you kind of work under the impression that the CTs have already smoked this off. So the CTs have thrown the smoke to delay a, a rush at the ramp just for the early game. If they're playing an opera, they probably won't smoke it though, so be careful about that. If you don't see a smoke there and you know it's not an eco, be prepared for an opera in that position. So what I like to do here is jump by, and if you do get by, you can hold this angle as the players push. And it used to be you would bounce the smoke off of the wall. It's a little bit more tough to do that, but now that the angles are a little bit different, look, you can peek right here just fine. There's nobody pushed out. If you look at it from their perspective, they're gonna have to push out right here, and that leaves them a little bit exposed. So just be prepared that they actually could still push all the way out there. But if you if you peek it like this, and you actually are able to take that position, you can just throw a, a smoke straight down, just like that. Throw your flash, enter. Now the next spot you have to worry about is of course someone on top of the box. The smoke kind of blocks that, and somebody rotating to this spot, which they won't get to very quickly, so you don't have to worry about that as much. Right there is kind of a very important spot, and as well as up top if they do that. But if you move out here and take position, you can easily deal with that player at the headshot box. Molotov them out, they're gonna have to run out of there. The other thing you can do is go on the right side of this, duck, jump up top so they don't see you over the top. Now you can play this spot. If you just jump right up onto it, you've left yourself a target for that player uh, really easily. But if you just come up to the side like this and go keep, and you get up, and you're good to go. And then you can even smoke off, if you have another player with a smoke, smoke off this position um, as you decide to go downstairs. Or if you just want to chill ramp for a bit after taking it, you know what? The whole map is opened up for you. It's your call now. Bombsite A has also seen many changes that on the surface may seem cosmetic or you may have overlooked. But when you actually get in game, they make a world of difference. So one of the great things that Valve has done on this map is really improve the angles and make them less super overpowered for the counter terrorist. So I'm a terrorist getting ready to enter into A site and look, I can actually look from hut and check out the rafters. This is great because it's no longer super OP as you run forward here, you just die every single time and you don't have to worry about outside completely from here. You just look into mini, even from way back here. They've taken out these really long op angles. This one I'm not as keen about. You uh, used to be able to look all the way through here um, at Squeaky. You can no longer throw the nade smoke flash inside of A to do the A side take from here. So that kind of kills that whole strategy, which I taught how to do. It's like a solo pug strat in case your teammates don't know how to uh, how to throw the smokes and flashes. You can do them all your own from there. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. You got to revise it. Now, you kind of have to play Squeaky. So you actually have to play this spot. Keep in mind, they can no longer be up there. They can no longer be up top. So it makes it actually possible to push in here now. However, the danger zones you gotta worry about are on top of hut. That one is still super powerful. It's no longer able to see like feet through it and it's no longer slanted. It's much better to hold uh, for the CTs. So you gotta worry about that spot. Gotta worry about someone just playing the site. There's a cubby back there. Mini as always you have to worry about. And if somebody's being sneaky beaky around the side, but it's much, much less possible. 
as you decide to push out. Even if you decide to push out, look, there's kind of the first spot someone's going to be inside of the rafters, uh, besides on top of the hut. Especially if you're rushing it, that's the only place they can get. There and mini. If you're just doing a full-out rush through here and trying to go down here, the only place they can be in time is right there and mini. So those are the only two spots you got to worry about when you're doing that strat, which is sort of just running it. So you've played this spot. You're ready to um, you're ready to smoke off mini so that you can move into the site. And now you're like, all right, we got a flash too. Here's my flash. It's not a good flash. Now you see that coming a mile away. It doesn't really hit too many people. It makes sense to have one person dedicated to flash. So look at this. The skylight flashes are super easy now. You just aim at the skylight and go. You can throw both of them. Boom, boom. And check this out. Look where they pop. Right in the middle of the site. This one pops right down. This one pops right down. This hits every single player in the site. They pop right down. They're difficult to avoid. You throw them as your team is entering. Just got to coordinate it and say, like, enter at 1730. They have 17 minutes? Goodness. Anyway, really, really nice. And then that player can very quickly rotate as well. He just runs right through. Goes down the ladder. This ladder is a little bit tough. Anyway, and he can come in and help as well. Or he can watch the flank. It's great. It's great. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Downstairs, we've had a change in callouts as well. Now, this is important because it'll mess you up if you played previous versions of Counter-Strike. The back halls was always called Toxic. Now, people are calling it Decon, short for Decontamination. And this new room here is called Toxic, short for Don't Camp in That Room, You Toxic <laughs> Thank you folks very much for watching. I am the War Owl, and I still have no closer. Let me tell you what just happened. I clapped in order to sync up the webcam with the video, because I thought, I'm just gonna clap. I can sync up that sound super easy. And I thought, oh, I forgot to do that at the beginning. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do a clap at the beginning. And then it hit me. I'm not a Time Lord. I can't travel through time. And I was honestly, genuinely disappointed that I could not travel through time.